Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at adding an ability to use uh, voice to text in your Rails application. This will allow people to click a little microphone icon or click a little button uh, to then start recording their voice to uh, you know, put some words into a search box or whatever. In this case, we can click on new post in this Rails app. You can see right here, I'm having some caching issues with Edge, but I'm using Edge here just so I had a separate browser to test this in. I can click start recording. As I start recording, it should start putting stuff into this box, but I can also click stop voice input and that will automatically finish it. Uh, we can also come in here and we can you know, start this again. And this time it'll work based on the previous cursor position here. And you can see if I stop talking for a second, it'll catch up and it'll just put the text into the text box. Just like that say hello and create the post and it'll work just fine. We can go back over to our post page. I have some turbo stuff running that I don't actually have running because it's for a different tutorial, uh, but you get the idea. We now have this uh, start recording stuff here. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's do this real fast. Uh, to do this, we're going to stop our server, CD out of it. I'm gonna have to get rid of last night's tutorial, get rid of the video, and then uh, we'll CD, or we'll do a Rails new video and we'll CD into the video and we'll run a code dot in there. Okay, so uh, one thing to cover is last night we did do a video covering the uh, use of temporary uh, or like test SSL certificates so that you can have a HTTPS connection in your Rails app uh, because what you may not have noticed there is that I am actually on HTTPS and that's because the Speech recognition will not work unless you have an HTTPS connection to the server. So real quick, we're just going to do that. I'll have these commands in the readme of the application, um, but here's what they look like. The first one is to generate an SSL certificate using SHA-256 RSA 2048. Uh, we then tell it to put a localhost.key and localhost.crt in the root of our application. We set it to expire in a year. You get the idea. We run this command. If you don't have OpenSSL, just sudo apt install OpenSSL, just like that. Put in your password or whatever, and then this should work. I can come over here and we should see in the root of our application, these two files. We can then come into our config, right click new folder, call it SSL or whatever you want. Just make sure you change it wherever you use it. You can then drag these two up here into the SSL folder, just like this, close this. You can come up here to config and inside of our puma.rb, we can set this up to run our SSL server on port 3001. Just do that with an SSL bind. We then tell it where the key is located, which is in config slash SSL slash localhost.key and where the cert is located, which is in the same directory with a different name. At this point, we are pretty much good to go. We can run a Rails S if we would like to over to localhost port 3001 with a HTTPS request. It'll ask us, or it'll tell us our connection is not private. We click advanced and then we click proceed to unsafe uh, at the bottom. And now we're good to go. Cool. So let's go ahead and let's generate a scaffold for a post that has a title and some content of type text, just like that. We can then go ahead and exit out of here. Uh, and actually now that I'm thinking about it, we do want to do one more thing, which is to generate a stimulus controller, which we call voice uh, input. And I can hit up there over here to hopefully get that. So that generates our voice input controller. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and close out of our routes, close out of here, and I'm going to update the readme real quick just to make sure uh, that I have it correct. I'm gonna come over here to slash Dean out slash, uh, and I call this like voice, or let's just go over to my repo. I'll just grab it from here. Uh, repositories and in the fast SSL is what I called it. I just want to grab the same readme because uh, it was already formatted and stuff. So we'll just do this, paste it in. There you go. Okay, so that's updated. We can now go ahead and do a git add dot git commit dash m with a init commit. And that's good. Now let's come over here and let's do our voice recognition. We come into app, views, posts, and we have our post form. And we also need to open up our app JavaScript controllers, voice input controller. So these are the two places where we need to do stuff. Let's start with the form because it's probably the easier of the two. We'll start with a change to the form tag. 
because we have to add in the binding for the stimulus controller. So let's go ahead and let's tell this. It has a data of controller with a voice input, which means this whole thing is now stimulus controller uh, wrapper. Uh, we can then update what is in the content. So in the content text area right here, we want this to say, hey, you have some data, which is a voice input, which is the name of our controller. Uh, target of type input or name input, which means we'll be able to use this as a target in our stimulus controller. We can then come down here, create a span with a data dash action of click arrow of voice input record. So this is saying on click in the voice input controller, call the record action from the stimulus controller. It then has some basic styling here to make it look like a link and a data dash target of voice dash input dot start button, which is just us setting a target for this. It then has the word start recording inside of it. Uh, and this is where you could change this to an icon. That's sort of the reason why I have this set up to look like a link is just because the span to me makes the most sense to change to like an icon if you wanted to. Uh, after that, we are pretty much done in our, uh, in our uh, area here. We can get rid of this style block if we want to. Uh, but we're pretty much done in the form. In the stimulus controller, this is where a lot of the logic happens. There's about 100 lines of code. I'm going to be copying and pasting, so you don't have to sit here and watch me type it all. Uh, but hopefully you'll forgive me for that. First thing we always want to do is make sure that we can at least connect. So we'll just console log some garbage here that we can see. We'll then set the speech recognition to be this dot speech recognition and set this dot speaking equal to false, which is just something we're going to use to control whether or not we're uh, actively recording. And come over to our application, run a Rails S again, come down to our config and our, oops, our routes.rb. And here we'll just set the root to be the post controller index action. Come over here and refresh. It takes us over here. We can run our pending migrations. We're now on the new page. I'm gonna hit control shift I to open up my console. Zoom in a bit, click new post. And we can see here this deck at speech recognition is not a function. Uh, voice input controller connected. So we know the controller is at least connected. Uh, and of course, this doesn't exist yet, so we have to set this up. So good, we know stimulus is working. Next thing we're going to do is come down here and do the get speech recognition function. I'm just going to paste this in. Uh, and feel free to pause the video or just grab this file from the video description. So first thing we do is we grab the speech recognition. We check if it has a window.speech recognition or a window.webkit search recognition. Uh, if there is none, it says, hey, your browser doesn't support this. Uh, otherwise, it just creates a new speech recognition object. It then calls two functions. One is to set up the properties and one is to set up the callbacks. So the, we'll start with the properties and I'll sort of walk you through it. It's really not that complicated. Um, I'm down here. So for continuous, this is just setting it up so that the uh, speech recognition runs continuously without you needing to call it. Interim results is like as you're talking, you can set this to true or false. Uh, and have it update uh, whenever there's natural pauses in your speaking without you needing to like finish the speech recognition loop. And then the language is just a list of standard language codes you can put in here for what language it supports. For the callbacks, uh, we can do that down here. And let me actually, before I do this, let me grab all of these comments here and just paste these in, uh, although they are kind of redundant but it never hurts to have something that looks semi-professional, at least for the illusion of, of giving a, a, a care. Okay, so we have our setup speech properties. We now need our callbacks again. Let's go ahead and paste these in, do that right here. So for our speech recognition callbacks, we have the on start event and on start, we just record or we console log that we're recording. We have the on error, which is a special uh, handle error uh, method that we're using here. We have the on end, which is just a console log to say we've stopped recording. And then we have an on result, which is whenever you speak, uh, this sort of gets fired. So, well, I guess you could think of it like that. It's kind of an over oversimplification, but you get the basic idea. So for the error, I'm doing a pretty lazy thing, which is just to say, hey, we had an error, which is this event.error. And then we call this dot stop recording. For the stop recording, pretty simple stuff. I'm gonna put this down here at the bottom. It just uh, says speech recognition.stop. The stuff speaking is false and the console logs stop recording. And here's where you can probably tell how ChatGPT uh, make all these comments because they're pretty, pretty meaningless at the end of the day. Uh, to match this stop recording one, we can just create a start recording real quick. 
just does the inverse of what stop recording does. Okay, so now we can come up to the handle uh, speech recognition error section and we can keep going. So if we don't have an error, we might have a result. So let's come down here. Uh, if we have a result, uh, we don't need this anymore. Uh, that was just from testing. We can then say, all right, here's the final and the interim transcript, which we get from this dot extract transcripts, which is another method we have to make. And then we call this dot update input value, which is where it actually puts this text into the input, uh, which is our content right here. So let's create the extract transcripts method. This is probably one of the more logic heavy ones. Uh, oops, that's not right. Uh, we'll come down here and do this. So first thing we do is we create two empty strings, one for the final and one for the interim transcript. We then loop through each of the uh, event.result indices. Uh, and then in here, we check if the index is final. If it is, we add it to the final result, or we check the, uh, the uh, index in the results. And if the is final is true, we set it to be the final transcript. Uh, else we set it to be the interim transcript. That's where we get those two or one is like a rolling update and one is the final update right here. At the end, we return the final and the interim transcript. Pretty self-explanatory there. Uh, we then need to update the input value so we can do that right here. This one's a little bit bigger, but it's mostly just because it takes in both of the transcripts right here, the input and the selection start, the selection end. This is where we're doing the cursor logic to make sure that we uh, put this wherever the cursor is in the input. So if we have like words go here, uh, we put it like, I don't know, in between words and go. Uh, and then we may ref Oh, we're in the demo application. Uh, so we put like words go here. I was like, why isn't this working? Uh, and then right here, we want the extra words that we're talking to go in the middle here. That's where we're setting up this cursor logic. Okay, so uh, that's for the uh, selections. After that, we set the updated value to be the before selection with the final transcript and the uh, after selection. So again, that's where the final transcript comes in. We then set the input value to be the updated value. We set the selection start to be uh, the selection start. And then we clear the interim transcript by grabbing the selection start plus the final transcript dot length. Uh, we set it and then we set the selection range uh, using those. So this is a built-in method for your input. So you don't really have to worry about this. So the last thing we have to do now is I believe handle the uh, record method. So we'll come up here for this one. First thing we do is we stop the, or we prevent default and stop propagation. This was a leftover from when I had this as a link. Uh, so you probably don't even need to use these anymore, which means you also don't need to pass in an event. Uh, and then we can say, all right, if this is not speech recognition compatible, or if it's not available yet, we just say, here's your error. Uh, we then do a start button, which is our start button target. A little bit redundant, but you get the idea. We then say, if this dot speaking, then we want to stop recording because we're already recording. So now we've clicked on it and we want to stop recording. Remember, this is the event bound to the uh, on click. If we uh, do that, we set the text to now say, hey, you can start recording. And then we do the inverse down here. And this should at this point hopefully work. If I come over here and refresh the page and we say start recording, it'll ask me for my microphone. I click allow uh, and then, oops, we get a network error here. So it's clearly not happy with something in our code. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over to Edge and we're gonna see if this is the same problem in Edge. We'll come in here and we'll say localhost port 3000 slash post slash new. Uh, Cause I have a feeling this is probably a brave issue. We'll click over to continue to localhost unsafe. We can now hit control shift I in here. Uh, and then we see the voice input controllers connected. Click start recording. We'll do some testing. And after we click stop, this is now working. So yeah, this is probably a brave uh, Chromium issue where it's broken in uh, our console here. Uh, again, this is something where for some reason, uh, Chromium builds vary a little bit here. Uh, but usually uh, it, it tends to work in, in Microsoft Edge if you do something like this. We can see that's working just fine. And then we can do something like, I don't know, words go here, a period, click start input recording and just, you know, go from here. And now you should see that's working as expected. There we go. Okay, so that's the basic idea. Of course, you can refine this a bit more. 
Uh, but for me, the key point is just that it's recording your voice and it's putting it into a box. And from there, you can add in whatever functionality you would need. So yeah, hopefully this was interesting and helpful and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.